Good morning. It's a bit chilly, but I just got my coffee. And today, we're gonna be talking about cameras a little bit. Um, specifically, using cameras for broadcast and some of the pros and cons to using non-broadcast cameras like what I'm filming on right now, an A7S III or a bigger real cinema camera. We're talking about using these or these for your broadcast. So when I'm shooting a cinematic broadcast, I'm always shooting in 2398 or 24 frames per second. Um, it gives it that cinematic motion blur, that cinematic look. It's kind of crucial to the look. Now, cameras like these, um, especially these because they're cinema cameras, can achieve that 24 frames per second really, really well. The other advantage is full frame, Super 35, large sensors, um, which gives us a ton of dynamic range and lets in a lot of light versus like before two third inch sensors. They are really, really tiny sensors, just not really designed for capturing with a huge dynamic range. Broadcasts are usually lit differently or they're outdoors. There's just a whole ton of reasons there. So full frame, super 35, great for that dynamic range and the color science. The color science that you get out of these is way more filmic on purpose. It's cinematic, it's designed again cinema camera designed for cinema. So we're going for that cinematic broadcast. It's kind of why I choose to use these. Now, where are the cons? Because we know that they look good, but what are the cons? Well, with a camera like this, your cons gonna be only HDMI out and even this is like a micro or mini HDMI, not even a full size HDMI. Um, and that's your only output. Some DSLRs don't even have a clean output. And it's kind of hard to rig. Like this is made for photos. It's okay for vlogging and that kind of thing, but it's it's kind of hard to rig this camera for a broadcast. I have some videos talking about the Pocket 6K and how we rig it. Um, again, it's kind of like the same DSLR style where it's, it's a lot harder to rig. And that's kind of your only port, that's your only option. There's no gen lock, there's no camera control. Um, it's just kind of, you're going for it using that HDMI. Now, there's ways around that with like an HDMI, a wireless video receiver to, and then the other end has SDI so you can get it into your switcher. So there's like always hacks, there's always ways to use it. And we've done a lot of shoots um, way back in the day on like 5D Mark IIs and 6Ds and that kind of thing. And they look incredible, the image is great. That full frame, it looks amazing. But for a broadcast, it's kind of not everything that you need. So moving into like a cinema camera like this. So you're getting more features that you want. You have SDI out and HDMI out. You have um, things like camera control. So a lot of these cinema cameras are starting to get camera control. You have Genlock inputs, you have dual record, you have built-in ND. So you're getting way better using like a cinema camera. Um, usually cinema cameras can offer you better lens mounts too. These ones, same thing I could do, you know, EF lenses, E lenses, have adapters, whatever. It, in this case, it doesn't really matter. But also, these are way easier to rig. They have things like top handles. They have things like side handles. Um, this is a way more comfortable package to shoot on. The battery life is way longer. You can add V-mount batteries. Again, the list goes on for the pros of this. Now, again, the cons. Um, usually, these cinema cameras and DSLRs have a lot of latency and even with Genlock, it can't necessarily get rid of it. Um, so I clocked this thing at about four frames of latency right out of the HDMI and the SDI port. So again, if you're wanting to do a broadcast and you're just broadcasting, latency doesn't super matter because you can always adjust your audio. 
But if you're wanting to do in-room iMag, that's where a camera like this, having that much latency, it, it's not gonna look amazing going through your system, adding a couple more frames by the time it gets to your projectors or LED screens. We could have a lot more latency. You could be looking at like eight frames of latency. So that's kind of a bummer, but it's kind of the things that you have to deal with. Now, a con for a cinema camera is if you ever wanted to shoot in 60 frames per second, a lot of these cinema cameras don't actually do that. Like the Red Komodo in 6K, it can output 1080p 60, but it can't, the project can't be in 60 frames per second in 6K. So with a DSLR or a cinema camera, you always want to use the full sensor, the full sensor size. And a lot of times they don't let you do that. So like uh, the Komodo, the full sensor is 6K. And if you change the project to 4K, it crops the sensor. And Sony has that problem too on some of their cameras. And it usually adds grain. It doesn't look as good. It's not as sharp. You can see all the weird stuff because it's physically cropping in that sensor. So all that being said, those are some of the downsides of using cinema cameras versus something like an Ursa broadcast, for example, is a broadcast camera and it's not cropping the sensor when you change it from 4K to 1080. It's just kind of designed to do that. So all that to say, there's always quirks using uh, cinema cameras or DSLRs with broadcast situations. Some of these cameras don't even output properly. Um, like you might have to add a decimator or an up down cross converter to scale these cameras to your correct switcher. More modern switchers like Constellations can automatically do that for you, which is great. But there's always quirks. There's always things that you have to like figure out with using cinema cameras. But the flip side is the image quality that you'll get out of a camera like this can be far superior, especially in the cinematic world. Again, using a cinematic camera for a cinematic broadcast kind of makes sense. This day and age, more modern cinema cameras, the companies are kind of catching on with, we like to do these cinematic broadcasts. So cameras like the new C300, the FX6, EVA1, they already are introducing things like camera control and gen lock and that kind of thing for us. So. Those cameras are fantastic. The Red Komodo is fantastic. The Ursa Mini Pro is still a fantastic cinema camera that you can use for broadcast and that works really, really well. Um, so again, you can use DSLRs. I've done it. It looks good. It's not the greatest broadcast workflow. Um, and I only really recommend it if you're doing broadcast. Cinema cameras, I think are the way to go. There's loads of options out there. If you ever need help trying to pick a camera for your room, feel free to DM me on Instagram or shoot us an email, info at laddesigns.co, and we'd be happy to work with you on specking cameras for your room to achieve your cinematic broadcast. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit subscribe and like this video. It helps us a ton with making this kind of content.